Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for yet another engaging panel discussion to, to talk about health as a sellable asset for marketeers and brands, where we learn the use of empathy, emotional approach, strategies to market health, as well as wellness to the masses also, which means to sell your product service to the consumer driven Indian market. With this, may I please now invite on the screen, Abhishek Gupta, Chief Marketing Officer, Edelweiss Tokyo Life Insurance, Venkat Erpina, Vice President, Marketing Fast Enough, Samta Datta, General Manager of Marketing, Sooth Healthcare, Samyukta Ayer, Vice President and Head of Marketing, Kaya Limited, and the session chair being Rashmi Tosar, the founder CEO of Brandcare. Well, with this, I'd like to humbly welcome all our esteemed panelists on the screen. Thank you so much for your valuable time. With this, the screen is all yours. Rashmi, it is over to you to take it forth with your exciting panel. And it's great to see so much energy and exuberance on the screen. We're looking forward to your panel now. Over to you. Thank you so, thank you so much, Bhavna. Thanks a lot. Pleasure. Thank you. Yep. Nice to see everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to everybody. This is Rashmi Tosar. I'm your session host. Welcome to this wonderful session of uh, health as a sellable asset uh, for marketers and brands. <clears throat> um, this COVID period will go down in history as a, you know, as a period of shift. Significant among these shifts was uh, the healthcare shift. All the, um, uh, the HIQ shops, the lift, uh, immunity, ventilators, PP cage, uh, oximeters became like this everyday vocab. And I'm sure you've, you've all been a part of it. Um, the health frenzy was so unimaginable and we've been it, uh, through it all and we've survived and uh, come on to the other side uh, um, somewhat unpacked, I would say. Um, while this unimaginable frenzy was there, we saw in the beginning of 2020, um, you know, the first four months was, was so hectic. Um, everybody was jumping into onto this brand working. Uh, there were about 650 million health apps which, which were downloaded globally. Uh, the dietary supplements and nutrition market, uh, it uh, just kind of exploded insurance devices um, people were just looking up for everything which they could find to keep themselves safe and to find themselves in um, good health and wherever there are vacuums marketers uh, abhor vacuums and then they tend to flood in um, so overall uh, while this is a blue ocean there is also thriving in this has never has not really very easy um, to all the out analysts how um, uh, they have done in one at all. Um, let me introduce Abhishek Gupta, Chief Marketing Officer, Edelweiss Tokyo Life. So Abhishek, has he joined in? Abhishek? Yes, I'm here. I yeah, so. I Okay. Audible and visible. Yes, yes, very much so. Hi there. We are um, glad to be here. Then we have been Vice President Marketing. I was oh, um, okay. just saying that these are times of you know extreme variability, and during this time, you know, trust takes a downturn. Um, how do you think pandemic has uh, impacted communication? Uh, you're very right, Rashmi. Uh, you know, during this time, especially when everybody's feeling so vulnerable, uh, the trust actually takes uh, a little backseat. When I say backseat, not in terms of backseat, in terms of its importance, but uh, backseat in terms of uh, the trust levels going down. Mm. Uh, so uh, during this time, I according to me, the most critical from a communication perspective or an advertising perspective or from a brand perspective is empathy. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is the time to probably tone down. This is a time to uh, 
tone down all the tall claims that probably you have been making earlier or uh, being a little over the top it is a time where you have to realize that uh, people are going through a major problem mm. and they are looking for a solution to that problem if you think that you have a product which offers a solution to this problem that people are facing you need to talk about it but you need to talk about it extremely empathetic ways. Uh, that is one part, especially for the life insurance industry, uh, which is heavily, heavily dependent on uh, third party distributors or what we normally call as insurance agents. Hmm. Uh, you have to actually, while one uh, part of your TG is the consumers who will end up buying life insurance. Hmm. Uh, as a brand marketer, as a communications professional, you also have to realize that there's another set of TG are these people who are actually going out there and trying to convince customer to buy your products. It's time to show yeah. empathy towards them as well. It's time to uh, ensure that they are well equipped to handle the change which is happening. So don't just look at only your end consumers, look at intermediaries also. And for industries like us, uh, where intermediaries play a huge role, I think uh, take a backseat and uh, go and understand their problems as well. Yes. Sure, I think uh, that's very important. What do you think? I mean, it's um, uh, you know, balancing. You very rightly said balancing sales and communications um, is is a very important thing. Uh, the pressure is to sell to your clients while also developing long term relations with them, and um, for health insurance professionals, it's a kind of a tightrope walk where consumers are expecting agents to be their trusted advisor to you know, tell them about uh, health plans, uh, but you're not just there to educate your um, clients, you have sales goals to meet and um, stay in business. Um, how do you maintain this balance of empathy? It's quite difficult on one side, you have to be um, you looking at you know how you're going to make the business and on, on, on the other side you have to also be their advisor find that um, very critical element of trust so uh, you know while uh, rashmi this question is not only valid during a pandemic or any crisis it is always I, it is always there. it is always there, there. Yeah. yes that, how do you balance what kind of uh, initiatives or communication do you balance need? And probably I'm going to say something which is going to be hugely unpopular or probably goes against the conventional marketing wisdom. Mm. Uh, during times of crisis, during times mm. of crisis, mm. you need to first speak to the people who are close to you, which are your intermediaries. So mm. my priority, my balance would go tilt in favor of them during this crisis because these are the people, please understand the mindset of an insurance professional. This guy has been selling, or uh, this guy guy is only I'm using as a metaphor. It is not gender specific. Yeah. This person has been selling life insurance for ages and ages and ages by meeting face to face. And that's the only way this person knows how to sell insurance. If there is no meeting, this person cannot sell. Because insurance takes time to convince customers, and therefore you need to meet customers. Suddenly in the pandemic, that thing is all gone. You can't meet the customers. However, you still have a house to run. You still are answerable to the uh, commitments to the business commitments of the organization. So at that point of time, others can say, this is how you make a shift. This is how you start selling in a mix of uh, video based plus uh, text based plus whatsapp based plus if possible go and meet the customer under safe conditions but this is how you do it and it is very important for me to handhold this person so yes uh, at this point of time what we did we actually focused uh, in terms of the balance more towards the distributor than less towards the consumers uh, when i say less towards the consumer it doesn't mean that we are completely neglecting the consumers but in terms of the effort However, yes, consumers also need to be told. And here also, my focus was more on my existing customers telling them that I am there. In case something happens, you have placed trust in us. 
when you bought a product from us and what we had given you at that time was just a promise i had not given anything else it was a piece of paper and a promise so i am here to honor that promise today should you need help so my focus was first on my existing customers and at that point of time you also realize that since consumers are feeling vulnerable uh, whenever the vulnerability increases the demand for our product increases that is very clear when when you start realizing oh shit mujhe kuch ho sakta hai sorry and something can go wrong with me that's when we start looking at products which hedge the risk and therefore insurance demand goes up uh, so yes it's a time that we also need to ensure that consumers who are looking for insurance are getting the best product according to their need but if i have to ask in terms of the order first is my intermediaries then is my existing customers then is my prospective customers in terms of crisis Uh, i think that's a very very valid point you have made abhishek that uh, especially when when you're selling at the point of vulnerability it's very important to say that uh, i'm there for you and um that i think is a, is a take away from here um just being able to say that i'm there for you Thank you. Screen. Uh, yes. Are you able to hear me? Somehow, my um, my connection today is yes. not too yes, great. Yes, please yeah, let me know. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Um, thank you. Oh, thank you, Abhishek. We will uh, we'll, we'll come back to you, um, Venkat. If I may ask you, um, tell us a little bit more about um, the philosophy of um, fast and up. okay great so i think uh, uh, when it comes to fasten up it is a five years old brand in uh, indian market uh, so we are basically into active and sports nutrition so i would say i think uh, uh, today if you take th- uh, three out of four uh, sports uh, candidates i think uh, they use fasten up products either you take indian cricket team you take uh, uh, 90% of the runners use this product so i think uh, we have built lot of trust around these products i think uh, we brought in new technology into the market where i think uh, fasten up is the first brand to bring in effervescent technology into india uh, mm. where uh, uh, all the products like let's say for example if you take uh, many brands are in liquid form powder form but we are the one who brought in effervescent we trusted in it we brought into indian market and today as i mentioned i think out of every four sports persons i think uh, two to three uh, sports persons are uh, uh, using our products so i think uh, the major value we created is i think uh, uh, starting from manufacturing factories uh, the way products labeled the way products delivered everywhere we try to maintain authenticity uh, we try to evolve as the market uh, uh, started building uh also uh, we made sure that more than um, pushing product into the market we try to pull audience by uh, having very strong communication uh, which gives more information around uh, aspects like for example effervescent is new to india 5 years back today okay. uh, being a number one brand in effervescent i think we can i can say that within the mix of products like let's say in sports nutrition or nutraceuticals i think we have three different formats i think fastest mm. growing format is effervescent so i think we were able to build that line uh, being very strong uh, 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 on authenticity side as well as uh, i can say uh, customer orientation service everything yeah so our value is being very authentic and uh, having very high quality production in place and uh, as we are the first one to bring in uh, effervescent i think uh, we are the one even today we are the number one in uh, manufacturing as well as uh, 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 on sales front on effervescent side so our uh, core value is uh, high, highest quality and customer service yeah uh, because there every day there are about uh, within india itself there are about 27 to 30 new brands of uh, health and nutrition supplements being launched and um, they are in several several different categories how important is it that you know you stay very true to your niche how important is that yeah so let me start with our own example today i think uh, when we started 
uh, our first cohort was runners in India. So we want to activate that category and we want to fuel uh, all those runs happening across the India. I think uh, even today, 90% of the runners use our product to fuel their uh, uh, run. So I think uh, uh, being uh, any technology that we are building or uh, uh, any new product that we are launching or uh, even the service that we are bringing in, I think uh, if you define your own niche, your own uh, cohort very clearly, I think uh, uh, servicing that cohort and niche uh, at top-notch level is very important. Uh, I know that every brand, uh, since uh, the opportunity is ample around, I think uh, getting into various categories, like uh, entering into new markets, entering into new TG. I think uh, especially in last four or five years, I think uh, health and wellness industry uh, became a blue ocean. So I think uh, the opportunity is ample. So I think uh, even though I think you have different business line planned or uh, you want to enter into a new market or you want to launch a new product, I think the core aspect of the core niche that you're targeting, our core niche is sports. So I think uh, the uh, either um, uh, market research or like let's say building products, launching new products, uh, everything should, uh, the core focus should be around your niche. So even today uh, we stand, if we take uh, a call, I think uh, uh, the, our inclination is always towards sports. So any nutrition product that we launch into the market, I think uh, the, the first priority goes to sports side. So uh, I, uh, that's one important factor. As I mentioned, again, I think uh, uh, as Abhishek was saying, I think uh, uh, the core value that you create for your brand, uh, that uh, authenticity that you create for your brand, uh, use that value. For example, on uh, insurance side, if you promise something and next uh, you don't deliver that for sure. I think that customer goes to another brand. So I think authenticity is the utmost important thing for any brand uh, to uh, have your own niche where your own niche will build your revenues. I think, in fact, I think uh, chasing new customer versus focusing on your own niche and is going to be building better revenues, qualified revenues, which will sustain. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Venkat. Um, I also had a small question here. Do you think uh, you've been using brand ambassadors as Varun and um, uh, their Shilpa Shetty? How much do you think they play, uh, uh, they play a role in, you know, being very focused to your own niche? Um, do they add a great value? Do they bring with them um, uh, followers? Do they really raise your perception within this uh, niche? How important are they? And um, what value do they bring in? Yeah, so I think uh, the way even I think we can call it as uh, we can call them celebrities or influencers or whatever. I think uh, uh, today, I think the way influencer, I think the word used, I think that is shaping up really uh, in a different uh, line where previously it's more of uh, selling products through influencers. I think uh, today influencer or celebrity is used to create a tone for your brand. Like let's say if you take Varun Dhawan or Shilpa Shetty, they are more into fitness, more into to, uh, I think uh, uh, they are more towards active uh, lifestyle. So I think uh, we picked those two celebrities to create a certain tone for our brand. Um, uh, it, again, for example, they are popular in certain states. So we want to make sure that our product is uh, uh, toned or uh, the product is uh, the image of the product, uh, image of our brand is created in a way so that uh, that's the reason we picked, we picked those two celebrities. And that helped us a lot in last two years. I think uh, either you take it as a brand visibility brand uh, uh, existence or uh, brand growth i think all three friends i think uh, those two celebrities helped us a lot in fact since they are into fitness and uh, active lifestyle and uh, uh, many followers uh, follow them uh, for those two reasons because they are active and they are fit so i think that they were able to add that value to our brand for sure yeah, I, I read somewhere you've, you've been calling them good vibes officer. I think that's a very interesting term, which is, um, I think, a little bit more um, than a celebrity or just an influencer. They just create that good vibes. It's a very nice term. And um, yeah, it's. I think it's yeah. a good start. One. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, and uh, Samta, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Yes, I'm there. Not able to hear her. I can you hear me? 
Yes, now I can, and I can see you also. I, I think I missed, um, we missed your introduction. Samta Datta, GM Marketing, so this is Rashmi Kosar here. Um, the, the, would you like to, um, you know, give us a little um, introduction about what is the philosophy of Sooth Healthcare? Um, and then we will get on to uh, discussing how exactly are you trying to get closer to its consumers? So a small bit of an introduction first to Sooth Healthcare, maybe. So I think, um, I think like, uh, like most of the panelists here or some of the panelists here, we are a young brand. We're a young Indian brand, exorbitant brands. We are into feminine hygiene, uh, creating solutions for young Indian women, homegrown solutions. So we are into sanitary, um, uh, menstruation cups to diapers, to adult diapers. That's the category we operate in. We fundamentally believe that Indian women and Indian intimate hygiene has been ignored and dominated by global players for the longest time. Uh, and while we have a lot of ample solutions in the market, uh, the category has, has been dominated by the culture of silence. So we are here to actually offer our products and also in somewhat uh, fashion sort of push the envelope on the culture of silence. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice, um, it, which is very valid. And I wanted to discuss that with you that this is typically an, an area which has been dominated so much by Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson and multinational players have been at it and they've done it for so very long. Um, how does a local brand, your flagship brand like Pari, how does it get close to consumers? You know, um, interestingly enough, Rashmi, we launched, we are, our GT presence launched in, um, in, early, in late 2018, early 19, and bang, after that, you know, uh, we, the pandemic really hit us. And I like Abhishek was say, sh saying, you know, how he has to sort of prioritize all his, you know, um, consumer and customer base. We, we had a tougher thing. We were here trying to introduce ourselves uh, and any which ways to a category where not many people are uh, willing to hear us. So, you know, the one thing is that um, we are a young brand and the consumer does not talk about this product to the retailer. So that becomes a very big challenge. You know, uh, when a girl goes to buy a sanitary uh, pad, the min there is a minimum uh, amount of conversation that happens between her and the seller. So she's like, whisper Dena, safety Dena, whatever her brand is Dena, you know. With that said, a new brand entering a mask as a mass teach player in the ma uh, market is a huge, huge challenge that we took upon ourselves. And, you know, that's uh, something that we are uh, building and fighting each day on. Uh, is it difficult? It is supremely challenging, I would say. And that's what makes it super fun. Um, in the past couple of years, we have, in terms of GT, in, you know, increased our distribution. Um, you know, started with India 2 and now sort of going to India 1 and providing solutions. So that is what we are doing in terms of brand building, in terms of being present. And in terms of actually uh, talking to the consumer, there are so many things that we are doing um, in, with today's consumer at so many levels. One is, of course, the advertising. And as, you know, Venkat was saying, having a good vibe ambassador, social influencers, all of that is a very, very norm thing. But I think also today's consumer is very, comes across as very conscientious. And we want to tap into that uh, ideology of theirs uh, as we speak to them. So our product line, our product philosophy, as well as how we communicate and go back to them is all about that. We, we have, uh, you know, we have somebody like Janvi Kapoor right in the front of the pack, uh, you know, communicating as well as we have Dr. Kiran Bedi and, you know, Indian police officer endorsing the brand on World Menstruation Day. So there are, you know, we like to talk, you know, not in a very insular way, but a very inclusive way for the brand. But yes, like you said, it is a huge challenge because, uh, you know, to, to match up the equity and budgets of a Procter or a Johnson is, is for a young brand is tough. But I think today's time with the new marketplace, I think it's it's a very very um it's a very very interesting challenge to have on board. Definitely so, definitely, and I, and I'm sure I think um, um, you have um, 
manufacturing facilities. I'm sure right from the product itself, you've been putting um, uh, the consumer-based thinking into making of the product as well. Um, does anything happen there from the time that you're conceptualizing the product? Has anything happened which is very local, which is very India-centric and which might give you an edge um, over, over the multinationals? That's, that's the basic product itself. Yeah. Uh, you have products across, uh, I think, um, uh, women's health and also, I think, uh, uh, kids' health and, and adult health. So in each of these segments, does uh, uh, the thinking of going local start from um, the time that the product is being conceptualized, that the product is being thought? Thank you, Rashmi. That's a very, very important and valid question as we own up in the category. Uh, one of the things that we, uh, on an ongoing basis, study about the category, especially the dominated leaders in the market, is that uh, while they are there, I mean, your supply chain cannot be matched, while their marketing budgets cannot be matched, I think in terms of product, definitely, uh, uh, they, I think the innovation funnel has been very, very limited. Uh, if I may say so, um, you know, uh, the women health and hygiene, um, you know, intimate hygiene has been so ignored because firstly, it's not talked about. So the ignorance comes from it not being in the center stage in the first go, right? So, you know, we, have, we are using mm -hmm. products and, and the competition is using products uh, which are so bad for your intimate hygiene because, you know, uh, like every other area of your body, the where while you're menstruating, um, you know, you need everything that you do need to be breathable, you know, and it has to ensure that, you know, you are, yes, you are covered, you are, your leakage free and all of that, but at the same time, you need to be breathable, right? You need to be airy, you need to be having your, you know, you need to be open, right? In that sense. So in, in those terms, we realized that, and that came from empathy as a product, as a product philosophy that, you know, we have to come up with products that actually, can really tally to that. One of our premium product uh, offering, which is Prima, is, is a breathable pad, you know, that ensure mm. that, you know, during even your heavy flow days, even as a heavy, we are a leakage champion, uh, even on those days, you are breathable down there and you are not suffocated with a plastic sheet that is definitely leakage proof, yeah. but really not good for your intimate health. So those are the points, you know, on a regular basis that we keep in mind, especially because today's women is going out there doing so much, much, I, I'm doing much more on my period than my mother was, right? Um, I'm going out, I'm going in, I'm wearing a pant, I'm changing in, I'm going. So all of those, you know, with the, with the, for the modern Indian women need to be kept in mind as you create offerings. And as we go forward, that has been a very, very strong leg um, of our thinking and our philosophy. Thank you. Thank you, Samta. That was really very interesting to understand how um, it's possible just with the local thinking to take multinationals head on by um, getting the, very close to the consumers, building in the consumer thinking right from the product stage, not just at the marketing stage. Um, very interesting. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, Samyukta, hi. I have a hi. question for you. And I'm sure um, Kaya is, uh, is a case study and um, everybody would like to know what's been done right uh, from the services model. I think a lot of introduction of product or products have also happened now. This is a brand which has been designed and uh, driven by, um, by dermatology, dermatologists. How do you maintain this balance of you know, science and emotion? It's a very deep question, actually, Rashmi. <laughs> Thanks for that. I'm sure it got all of us thinking. Um, I think there's this very famous uh, quote by uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, And um, basically, it's a very simple philosophy, but it really runs very deep. It speaks about saying that keeping your body healthy is an expression of, you know, gratitude to the whole cosmos. And I think a lot of it is also, um, you know, very, again, I think it's very karmic because it's very linked to what Samta was also talking about literally like, you know, 10 seconds ago, because it's a very simple scientific truth, really, right? Like beauty in most cases is a reflection of good health, right? 
Um, again, I think that's very linked to what Venkat was also talking about because he spoke a lot about authenticity and you know, uh, you know, getting things right from the consumer perspective. Um, I'll give you a simple example. Um, when your hair is healthy, your hair looks beautiful. When your skin is healthy, your skin looks beautiful, right? Um, so what happens is that largely beauty becomes a byproduct of good health. Um, I think we, you started off your conversation, you know, where you spoke about the pandemic, you spoke about, um, I think Abhishek spoke a lot about people's uh, realization and uh, I think for everyone, it's, it's hit home very hard for each one of us, but I think health suddenly became a prerogative in everybody's life, even if it weren't, wasn't before, I think that became very important, you spoke about the number of launches that happen in India, you know, 25, 30 is a huge number of launches that are happening every day. Um, and it's actually an age old secret, right? Like if I'm healthy, I will look beautiful. Uh, so skin health suddenly became something to achieve. Hair health became something to, you know, actually focus on. So when you look at a very clear dermatology kind of an approach, you know, bringing it back to Kaya, uh, we focus on health from within, right? We cure, we treat, we better because they're all MD, highly MD qualified doctors. They're looking at your skin, they're looking at your hair, they're looking at body health. And the minute, for example, you have any kind of say acne or you have uh, say hair fall or dandruff, it could be any issue with your skin or, or skin or hair. Um, the minute they're going deep within doing the right kind of treatments customized to what that person needs, um, in the absence of say acne scars, your skin starts glowing because everything is suddenly clear. In the absence of hair falls and you have a head full of hair, it's, it's really shining from within. Automatically, you end up looking beautiful. And because science has been used, you know, from within to kind of, you know, treat everything from the outside and it looks beautiful, uh, the emotion that manifests because of this is an emotion of happiness. There's an emotion of freedom. There's an emotion of, I think Samta spoke about uh, independence. You spoke about inclusivity. Because it's very inclusive, right? It's about every person's journey, even with health, is so different from the other person's journey of health. And that's really where we are. It's literally like saying you look good, you feel good, and automatically there's a there's this entire you know spurt of happiness that's kind of got around. And the pandemic has taught us a very health first approach. Again, bringing it back, I think lungs is something I don't know if I don't think any one of us was focusing so much on the importance of you know, building lung capacity, working out, all of that started happening. Again, the byproduct of that is that people automatically started looking good. It's a different story that from a health benefit perspective, your body could then combat any illness that hit your way. But the minute you started looking good, so it's really very rational, right? Like, and I think people, it's a very simple insight. I think as marketers and advertisers across the board, they're always looking for that simple human truth. And I think that's why Kaya has also kind of always been in this space because we are a 19 year old brand. We've been in India for a very long time. Um, and it's a very simple approach. If I am healthy, I end up looking good by default and I end up looking good. I end up feeling good. I end up feeling good. So I'm happy. So it's a very simple mantra. Um, to answer your question, the science is the how to, it helps you achieve that beauty becomes the outcome. And I think emotion is just a manifestation, a very FYI manifestation, if I were to call it that. Thank you. Thank you, Samta. Thank you very much for that. Um, uh, I think we are just about warming up and we can just go on forever with uh, this discussion. Maybe we should take it offline sometime when we meet again. Um, thank you so much, everybody. And it was really my pleasure um, hosting this. Thanks. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. Thank you so much. Well, uh, with this, thank ladies you. and gentlemen, uh, thank, you, thank you, Abhishek. Thank you, Venkat. Thank you, Samta. Thank you, Samta. Thank you, Rashmi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.